Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soul scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're talking about the number one thing that no one in the houseplant community talks about, but that I seriously think you guys need to start thinking about. Let's just jump straight into it. So this topic is super new. I haven't heard of anyone in the houseplant community talk about it, but it's something that I want to introduce to you guys lightly in a, you guys are really liking the super nerdy stuff. So I want to introduce it to you lightly because as houseplant people, I think that you're really gonna succeed if you you follow these recommendations I'm about to give you. And to the point that I quite honestly think that this has the potential to cause you to go viral because you'd have some really rapid stunning growth. So um, it's something that I personally know about, but that I mentally time-wise don't have time to deal with only because I've got a full-time job, I've got my YouTube channel, I've got the website, I've got houseplants, I've got gardens, so I don't have a ton of time to deal with this. But if you're a strict houseplant person, if you're a strict cannabis person, if you're a strict indoor gardener, peppers, tomatoes, you name it, then this is most definitely, the, the if you watch no video on the internet, this is the video you have to watch. What we're gonna to talk to, about today is called Vapor Rusher Deficit. So VPD is the acronym for this. And Vapor Pressure de Deficit refers to a whole conglomerate of factors, but all of which will heavily affect how quickly your plants grow. So if you are taking clones, cuttings from your house plants, if you're trying to get fruits, flowers, or cannabis to flower, if you're trying to get rapid foliage growth, your VPD is very important to your entire setup system. So what is it? Let's jump into it. So I did an entire video on the humidity in a room and how humidity works and why things like pebble dishes don't work, but how ionized humidifiers do work. And all these things are referring to something called the saturation point within our air. So we're going to be talking about something called SVP today. And everything I spoke about in that first video that was done a while ago now about water humidity or humidity in the air is the vapor saturation pressure. So as the air in our home gets warmer, the amount of water it can hold goes up. As our air gets cooler or our air in our house gets cooler, such as things that are on windowsills, our humidity holding capacity goes down. So the actual calculation of the humidity in our atmosphere is called AVP. And there's a whole bunch of factors that will affect our actual vapor pressure or our AVP, but ultimately it is the total water vapor that is in our air. So our relative humidity is calculated using the actual vapor pressure, but also using the saturated vapor pressure. And the formula looks something like this. It's AVP divided by SVP times by 100, which gives us a relative humidity in percentage, which means we are able to calculate how much moisture that air is supposed to hold versus how much it's actually holding and place a percentage on it. So VPD, which is the topic we're talking about today, is how much room is left between the AVP and the SVP. So how much more moisture can we fit into our air? So you're probably wondering, well, why does VPD matter? And at the end of the video, I'm going to give you a chart looking thing that's gonna give you an idea of where the ideal grow level is at for the temperature your home is at, and more specifically, what temperature the area your house plants is in. So for example, if you have your house plants on a windowsill versus in a grow room versus a grow tent versus somewhere else, that's going to change the humidity your area needs to be at and how to best capitalize on grow. So if you have a grow tent or an Ikea cabinet, 
then this is most definitely a concept that you want to take into consideration because while you think the higher the better, you may be actually restricting some growth in your plants. So why is VPD important? And it comes down to quite a few factors, but there's five main ones in particular. The first one being the stomata opening. So our stomata open in order to allow CO2 in. CO2 is a part of the wonderful formula of photosynthesis and therefore it is an essential nutrient. So we did the 17 essential nutrients. Carbon is one of them and it comes in in the form of CO2 through the stomata. So if we have our stomata open to allow our CO2 in, we end up with water loss, which results in our second point, which is respiration and water loss or transpiration. So through transpiration, we end up with water loss. But if our actual vapor pressure or our actual humidity in our room or relative humidity in our room is too low, we end up losing more water than we actually need and we end up with wilting in the plant. If we end up with our humidity too high, which can happen in our grow tents or in our IKEA cabinets, we end up with the other side where we don't let out enough water. So that brings me into my third point, which is, well, why does the excess moisture harm anything? If we don't let out more water, then we just simply aren't starving our plant for water. But the reality is that nutrient is transported against the gradient. So think of a straw. If you're sucking on a straw and you pinch it off at the top, you're not getting any more of the vitamins, the carbohydrates, the fats, the proteins from the bottom of the straw because you can't get any more out because you've clogged the pore, there's nowhere else to go with it. Or conversely, if you filled up your mouth with smoothie and then you kept on trying to suck more and more of the smoothie out of the container it's in, you're at capacity, there's nowhere else for it to go. And so therefore the nutrients, the carbohydrates, proteins all stay in the smoothie solution. Same thing happens with the plant. If the plant isn't able to excrete a certain, certain amount of water, what ends up happening is the nutrients ends up staying in our soil, which means our plant isn't getting a cycling of nutrients or nutri nutrients in its place, which ultimately will help with flowering, new growth, uh, better root development, you name it. So if our VPD, so if our VPD isn't in the range that we need it in, it can cause plant stress because the plant isn't able to respire the way it needs to, nutrients isn't transported the way it needs to be, and we end up with stagnant water, stagnant nutrient, all that fun stuff inside of our plant. So there are three factors, three, not four, three factors that influence our VPD. The first one being light, the second one being temperature, and the third one being humidity. So let's look at how these are correlated with each other. If our temperature increases, our VPD increases. If our temperature decreases, our, our VPD decreases. If our humiditor, hum, humiditor, if our humidifier or our humidity increases, then our VPD decreases. If our humidity decreases, our VPD increases. So those ones are inversely related. If our light intensity increases, then our VPD increases. And this isn't because of the light per se, but it actually has to do with the heat of the leaf. So when our lights get closer to our plants, our leaves tend to warm up. This is less substantial with LED lights, for example. Um, but if you're next to a window, a greenhouse, that sort of thing, your VPD will change. Conversely, if our lights are farther away, we have it in a cool environment, maybe not under any sort of grow light. Again, we're going to affect our VPD and this ultimately will decrease it. So you're probably wondering, well, how do I calculate VPD and why do, what do I do with this information? So it's actually really, really easy and something you can quite honestly do in your home once a week and just kind of check in on where things are at. So first off, you need to figure out what your saturated vaporization pressure is. So SVP is the first thing you need to figure out. So I'm gonna pop up the formula here on the screen, but ultimately what it comes down to is the T's in the formula need to be substituted with your temperature of your room. So the room temperature is what it has to be substituted with. The next thing you wanna calculate is your VPD. So once you have your SVP, 
write that down um, and document it on a sheet of paper so you know for future reference if your house always runs at 21 degrees for example document that because your SVP will not change so long as your temperature does not change next what you're going to do is you're going to take your SVP so the formula that we just calculated from you're going to take that number and you're going to times it by in brackets so you're going to do the formula in brackets first you're going to do one minus your relative humidity divide by 100 figure out what that comes out to, and then you're going to times that by the SVP that you calculated. This is going to give you your VPD. Now, that's your ambient kind of VPD. If you wanted to get super technical and you really wanted to make sure this was doing like going 110% correctly, what you would do is you would take an infrared temperature scanner and you would actually scan your plant leaves and in that formula where we had the T for temperature, instead of using our ambient temperature of our home, we would actually be using the temperature of the leaf itself to then give us the SVP that we would then plug into that second formula. Now, if you're not a math person and you simply want to know right off the bat what your VPD is, there's a chart and I'll make a blog post about the chart and you can then go and use it. I will just kind of put it up on the screen. I'll put the, the formula down below, but where you wanna be is in the green. So there's dark green, there's light green, there's yellow, and then there's like a red or an orange. You don't wanna be in the red or the orange. You don't wanna be in the yellow and you don't even wanna be in the light green. Technically you want to be in that really, really dark green area. So for example, I'm just looking at one here in front of me and um, it's showing me my temperature and say we're at uh, room temp, so 21 degrees Celsius, by a relative humidity of 50%. You wanna make sure that your VPD is at a, uh, this one's showing a 1.2. So you wanna make sure your VPD is at 1.2. If you can find, there's lots of calculators online that you can find your VPD at, but um, if you plug your numbers in to the calculator and it comes out to 1.2, or if you do the calculations I showed you to do and you come out at 1.2, you're, you're good to go. If you show up anywhere outside of 1.2, but you're in that humidity range and you're in that temperature range, it's a great indicator that you are not maximizing your growth. So for those of you that have the IKEA grow crap cabinets um, and you're really trying to get some nice, uh, Ethereum growth, whatever the case is, the reason why you're not seeing that really nice growth is because your temperature likely is not high enough. So if you have 80% uh, relative humidity, which I think 60 to 80 isn't out of the realm of normal for a lot of those cabinets. So let's do 70. So if you have a 70% relative humidity in the IKEA cabinet, you want to, quite honestly, you want to put a heater in there <laughs> put it over a register or something because you want um, 86 degrees fahrenheit to about 91 degrees fahrenheit it's pretty warm it's really actually really warm way warmer than room temperature so if you're not seeing really nice growth if you're noticing lots of mold that sort of thing increase your heat to match your humidity or decrease your temperature uh, or decrease your humidity to match the temperature of the cabinets. You need to, to maximize growth, you need to adjust accordingly. Now, if you have plants obviously that need a relative humidity of 60 plus, then you need to adjust your temperature because that's obviously not an option in that case. So I'll put a, a, a VPD calculator, I'll try to find a link to one that is good and I'll, I'll put that in below. But honestly, you guys, if you're looking for rapid growth, this is, this is the solution. This is what you want to use, especially if you're into selling or propagating, all that sort of stuff. Um, there are stages that are best for the VPD calculation. So I just have some written down here. Um, if you can keep your VPD at 0.8, uh, between 0.5 and 0.8 kilopascals, that, that's the number result. If you can stay in and around there, so you'd have to look at your relative humidity charts, make sure your plants can survive in and around that range, then that's best for propagations and seedlings, for example. And if you're looking for really nice foliage stages, you're looking at around one kilopascal 
in and around is ideally where you want to be. If you're a little bit lower, a little bit higher, it'll be fine, but in and around that range. And then for flowering stage, you want to be 1.2 kilopascals or higher on the, on the graph. But if you can just get in the green, just in the green on the graph, you'll see some really good results. And like I said, it ultimately comes down to your plant's ability to remove water and at what pace it removes water. So if it's removing it too quickly, then the plant potentially is going to have lackluster results because the nutrient isn't staying in the profile long enough and it's just kind of coming out and falling out through respiration or transpiration. Um, and then if it's if your uh, moisture is too high, your relative moisture is too high, or your temperature is out of whack, and those kilopascals aren't playing nice with each other, what ends up happening is we end up with not enough nutrient uptake. So we end up with a, a stalled plant ultimately. So if you want really good results, if you want those beautiful Instagram worthy photos, then VPD is your answer. Definitely your answer. If you're a cannabis person, I'm sure you guys already know what I'm talking about here. Not gonna lie, gardeners and houseplant people, you really need to pick it up because let me tell you, those cannabis people, they're a step ahead of you guys. So they use this all the time. They do use this all the time. If you are a cannabis grower and you don't use VPD, where are you at? Seriously, where are you at? God, man. You can't, uh, you can use VPD in an outdoor scenario, but it's not as, like it helps you understand what's going on with your plant, but unfortunately you're kind of a slave to what's going on outside, right? Like you can't control the outdoor temperature. You may be heated up, but you really can't cool it down. Uh, you definitely cannot control the humidity, so you have to play nice with the humidity, all that stuff. But uh, yeah, it's a really cool concept. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I don't know, maybe it's too much for houseplant people. Maybe you guys aren't there yet. If you're not, that's totally cool. Um, but I just want to put the feelers out there. I've done more scientific-based uh, videos with the, the garden people, and so I wanted to do a little bit math-heavy, science-based uh, houseplant one and just see how it how it rides if you guys enjoy it let me know if you do I will make you more really science-based content just really want to help you guys really want to make sure you achieve greatness out there in the houseplant world so I want to thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed the video be sure to give it a thumbs up let me know in the comments what you thought of the video hit the subscribe button and I will talk to you guys next time bye